If we're honest with ourselves, we've all got a folder of code that needs to be cleaned up quite a bit, sitting somewhere on our drives. This week I'll show you a tool called Black that can actually help do that if you're willing to hand over control of some of the formatting decisions. Welcome to another MatPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week I want to talk a little bit about how we can practice good code hygiene. So we all know that we should follow the PEP8 guidelines when we're writing our code, you know, space after a comma, no spaces around the equal sign when it's in a function argument and so on. But we all start out with that. And then as we're debugging our scripts, we maybe break some of the rules and Eventually, we're having a script that works, but it's maybe not so clean to read. And sure, you can use a flake checker and go back and manually clean that up, and that's what I do on many of my projects if they're for libraries, so you know that's what we do with MetPy. But maybe it's just a script to make a map that's sitting on your hard drive, and you'd like it to look nice and be formatted nice, but you might not care about some of the minutia that you get from hand formatting. Well, that's where tools like Black can come in. So if you're unfamiliar with the name, the logo gives you a hint. This is based on something that Henry Ford said, of course, who uh, came up with the assembly line method of manufacturing. When they were manufacturing the Model T, he said any customer can have a car painted any color that he wants so long as it is black. In other words, you don't really get to make a decision here. This is the way that we're going to do it. And that's exactly the philosophy that the black code formatter has. It will make decisions for you on how it's going to format your code. It's always going to be consistent. Whether or not you agree with it or like it is a different matter. And I will tell you personally, I don't like some of the decisions that black makes when it's doing this formatting. But when I do have a pile of map scripts that I've inherited or somebody emails me a script and it's formatted very poorly and I just want to clean it up so I can look at it and try to help them find the problem, this is a go-to tool. Now, if you go to the documentation, you'll see there are a few command line arguments that you can pass, but not many. It's really not all that configurable. Again, they've made the decision for you. It's something that you don't have to think about. And their argument is that it saves you uh, your mental energy to do something that's more important, which in some cases I would say, yeah, that's definitely true. And it's by far not a perfect tool but it's certainly better and faster than having to go through and clean up everything by hand. So let's take a look at an example. This is a precipitation map script. It's going to go and download one day precipitation and plot it on a map. Nothing too complicated here. We're making our own color map and then we're doing our contour filled plot. So nothing too out of the ordinary, but yeah, it's probably a little hard to read. In fact, going anything approaching 100 characters or over is significantly difficult to read, especially if you've got things side by side on your screen or you have any kind of vision impairment. So just for fun, let's do a PEP8 check on this. There are, of course, many command line tools that you can use to do this, but to save us from having to install those, I'm just going to copy and paste the code into pep8online.com. This is, of course, not how I check my code normally, but again, just to keep us from having to do some installs and things, this is going to be a quick way to see what the problems are. We see we've got a few things like a missing white space after a comma right there, unexpected spaces right here, a line that's too long, some missing white space after that comma, a blank line that contains white space, missing white space, and then a blank line at the end of the file, an extra one. So we could go ahead and clean all these up manually. And again, that's what I do sometimes. But if I've got a 600 line mapping script and I've got five or six of them and they all have maybe up to a hundred of these issues, it can get quite time consuming. Whereas I just want to clean it up, get my code committed and move on with life. So let's try running this through black. First, we're going to install it. I prefer to install through Conda. So Conda install 
And then I'm going to specify that I want to install from the Conda Forge channel, which we've talked about before. And I want to install the black package. Now, depending on what you've already got in your environment, it may pull in some dependencies as well, uh, or it may have to change some things around. All right, so here we've got some new things that are gonna be installed and some superseded. So we'll go ahead and let that installation complete. And now we're ready to go. I'm gonna clear my screen there with CLS or clear depending on your operating system. And let's go ahead and run this through. So we're just going to type black and then the name of our script. Now there's some Unicode printing issues in the Anaconda prompt on Windows anyway, hence those question marks. But it says what we've reformatted, it's all done. You notice it will reformat multiple files for you. In fact, there are many projects that do use black that just run the entire repository through black. One advantage to this is it does help reduce the size of diffs. All right, so let's go look at our script. Well, it looks like we've done some line wrapping. Here we've definitely line wrapped after each of those long arguments. And this is one of the things that you might like or dislike is that it breaks out every list element onto a new line and uses what I would consider more of a JavaScript style of the spacing of our braces there. But overall, though much longer, this code is more readable. There's no doubt about it. So let's go ahead and copy and put this into the online checker. And there we go, no issues found. So that took just a couple of seconds and no issues happened. Now this is a beta tool, but it does make sure that you get the same output, uh, the same assembly basically, after it runs on your code. Of course, it's always a good idea to go ahead and check that your script still works. And though we've got a couple of warnings that were there before, there's our map. All right, so Black is a really useful tool to take your piles of code and make them more readable and Pep8 compatible. I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.